Your mobile apps are often going to want to take advantage of some very powerful client API methods and phone gap API methods. So for example, in the uh, demo app that we're looking at on screen now, if I run this and I go, for instance, to the GPS section, it's going to say, this app is running as a web app, so device functions are not accessible. So that's the first point. It's very important often, often to be able to differentiate between uh, an app that's running as a native app or one that's running in a browser as a regular web app. So the, in this particular case, what we do is when we click on GPS or accelerometer, let's go to the GPS one, let's go to the page. If you look at the page events, you'll see that there is an on-page show event. And here we can see the first of the functions is, is native app. So this allows us to perform that test within our script. If I go to the user guide here, there you can see the is native app. Also another useful one is is native app online. So if you are running as a native app, you then need to say, well, is it actually online or not? Because you may want to elegantly handle the messaging depending on whether uh, your app is able to reach the, the internet or not. The other set of functions that are very important are the phone gap functions. And if we look, let's go back to the app. In this particular case, it's going to display waiting for GPS data, and then it's going to try and talk to the GPS feature of your phone. Again, this is all handled in the same place. So if it is a native app, it's going to come through to here. And let me make a bit more space. And we can see this is all phone gap stuff. So I'm setting up the options, the GPS option. So here, for instance, the frequency, it's going to query the GPS sensor every second. And then here we're calling the navigator geolocation watch position. So that's basically your phone gap call. And there's our callback function to handle it. So if I want to find the documentation for that, let's go to phone gap. Should have had this ready before. And then we can go to API docs. And here you'll find very nicely laid out all of the documentation for accessing the device features. So this is where you should really refer to. And you can implement your functions pretty well exactly as you see them here inside your application craft app.